this is an office pc from 2010 and in this video i'm going to install android on it let's get started let's do a rundown on the pc it's an hp pavilion elite that was released in 2010 these came in many configurations but the one i have is an upper mid-range model the processor is an amd phenom 2 x6 1035t which released in 2010. It is comparable to our first gen Intel Core i5 or i7 except you get 6 cores instead of 4. There's 8GB of DDR3 RAM installed which is a good amount for Android devices. Graphics card is a Radeon HD 5770, a mid-range card from October of 2009. It's still somewhat capable as seen in this video. You can watch it from the card in the top right. This PC doesn't have a wireless card which means no Wi-Fi and no Bluetooth. So we'll have to resort to Ethernet, a wired connection. Lastly, I'll be installing Android onto a 1TB 7200 RPM spinning hard drive that's as old as the PC. I have no idea how it's still working but that's not important. Right now, the PC runs Windows 10, but we're going to install Android. I went to the Android x86 website, which is a release of Android for x86 computers, which as you may know, most modern PC processors are. <laughs> I downloaded the latest 64-bit build based on Android 9. Then I copied the ISO to this USB flash drive containing Ventoy, which allows me to load multiple ISOs on one drive. So, I restarted the PC, spammed the escape key to enter the boot menu, and selected the SanDisk flash drive with Ventoy. But before I booted into Android, I loaded up Gpartied Live, a partition editor that can run off a USB stick. I shrunk the Windows partition by 88GB, then created an XT4 partition with the blank space. This is where I'll be installing Android. I restarted to Ventoy and booted the Android x86 ISO. It brought me to a menu with three options. Live CD, run Android without installation, live CD, debug mode, and installation, install Android x86 to hard disk. I chose the third option, skipping the live CDs, as I really don't think it would be fun to run a whole OS of USB 2.0 speeds, as this computer doesn't have any USB 3 ports. Then I was asked to choose a partition, so I picked the 88GB partition I made earlier. It asked me what I wanted to format it as, and I picked XT4, even though the partition was just created. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm kinda retarded. Then it asked if I wanted to install the Grub bootloader, and I picked yes, because I wouldn't be able to boot to Android without it. Then it detected my Windows partition and asked if I wanted to create a boot item for it. By picking yes, it created a dual boot, which allows me to swap between Windows and Android anytime I want. Then it asked if I wanted to make the system partition read-write, which allows for easier debugging. I picked no, because it said the installation would take longer, which I didn't want. The installation finished, and I restarted the PC. It booted into the Grub bootloader which allowed me to choose between Android x86, Android with some options that aren't important right now, and Windows. I selected Android x86 and it said it was now booting. Two minutes later, it was still booting, so something wasn't right. So I began troubleshooting. I tried a bunch of methods to get it to boot. After almost an hour of attempts, I decided to give up and download the 32-bit build since the 64-bit build is a bit broken, at least on this machine. I booted the installer and the procedure was the exact same. When it was done and I tried to enter Android, I used one of the flags from earlier when I was trying to get the 64-bit build to boot, specifically no mode set which disables GPU drivers. To my surprise, Android actually began booting, albeit in the wrong resolution since the GPU drivers are disabled. When it was done, processes kept stopping, but that's not important. I selected Quick Step as the launcher and got to a home screen, but the colors were all messed up due to there being no GPU drivers. Probably an AMD thing, I'm not sure. 
so I restarted without no mode set and Android began booting at the correct resolution. I made it to the home screen and shit immediately started crashing again, but at least the colors were correct. Anyway, it prompted me to finish setup by connecting to Wi-Fi, which I couldn't do since I had no wireless card. The UI pretty much functions the same as a tablet that's running Android 9 Pi. The battery icon was empty with an exclamation mark because this computer doesn't have a battery like a laptop would. I looked at the built-in apps. It comes with some standard AOSP apps, dev tool, whatever that is, a calibration app for touchscreens, the old Lineage OS music app, a terminal emulator, an RSS reader, a taskbar of some sort, and Google apps such as the Play Store, Chrome, Gmail, and the Google app. There was some form of keyboard functionality, pressing left alt would bring up the emoji keyboard. To check the sound, I went into the clock app and set a timer for one second. and the sound was indeed working through motherboard audio. Since I had no internet access, I booted back into Windows to acquire some Android games. Then I booted into Debian Live to copy the games from the Windows partition to the Android partition. But I couldn't access the Windows partition because Windows sucks and when I tried accessing Android user data where all downloaded files go, I didn't have permissions to open it, probably some form of encryption. So I looked to other Android releases and found Bliss OS which is based on Android 13 and features a more desktop oriented UI. I copied the latest 64 bit release to the flash drive, booted into the installer only to see this message basically telling me that I'm wasting my time. You see, it says that my CPU doesn't support SSE 4.2 which is an instruction set designed to speed up certain tasks. Intel CPU started supporting it in 2008 and AMD CPU started supporting it in 2011, a year after this phenom came out. And since I have no SSE 4.2 support, this OS refuses to boot. So I was forced to return to Android x86. I was able to get internet access using another phone connected via USB to tether its Wi-Fi connection to the PC. It wasn't very fast considering it's connected over USB 2.2 but it's better than nothing. I signed into Google Play, applied pending updates and downloaded some games. Geometry Dash kept crashing on startup, Altos Odyssey gave a strange error and Subway Surfers caused the monitor to lose signal then the game would crash. The YouTube app would crash on startup, but I was able to watch videos in the browser just fine. If these light games wouldn't run, I had no hope for anything heavier such as Fortnite or Genji Impact, so I gave up and downloaded Android 8 x86. The installation process was the same, but when I loaded the setup, I noticed that the battery icon was more elegant, showing a charging battery instead of no battery. When I finished setup, I noticed that I was picking up Wi-Fi networks, which should be impossible because this PC doesn't have a wireless card. But when I looked into it, there was an open Wi-Fi network named Vert Wi-Fi. I connected to it and I was able to get internet access without tethering. It turns out that Vert Wi-Fi is a workaround for Ethernet on Android x86. So this means the Ethernet driver was actually being detected. Now that I'm running an older version of Android, I thought performance would be better, considering this ancient AMD beast really doesn't like modern Android. But games like Geometry Dash still refuse to launch. The YouTube app actually opened, but playing at 720p caused lots of frame drops. So there is some issue with hardware acceleration and it's probably why games won't launch. I opened CPU Z and it correctly detected the AMD Phenom being used. Very odd seeing a desktop configuration running on Android. But the least offensive thing is that even through all this turmoil, I'm able to go back to Windows, a real OS that was actually designed for the desktop. If I get my hands on a newer machine, I'll revisit this OS. If you made it this far, that means you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you liked it, leave a dislike if you dislike it, comment your thoughts, 
and subscribe below to the channel. Thanks for watching.